This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1560, Holiday Refocus, Connection Instead of Perfection, and Five Ways to Manage Infidelity Triggers, both by Dr. Susan Chanderman of chanpsych.com. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us once again here on ORD. I'm your host and narrator, Greg Audino. Grateful to be with you once again, and this time with two shorter posts from the same author, We like to do this from time to time if you're new here. Dr. Susan Chanderban is going to share some great insight on a few different topics today. So let's give her work the floor and optimize your life. Holiday Refocus, Connection Instead of Perfection by Dr. Susan Chanderban of chanpsych.com While the holidays can be a fun time of celebration, they can also be stressful. Between running errands, shopping, cooking, and having a busier schedule, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. This year might be even more stressful than usual. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, many people passed on their traditional holiday plans last year. Now, as people are more comfortable getting together again, there are greater expectations. But it doesn't have to be this way. You might be worried about how perfect your holiday ham looks, or whether you've purchased enough presents. If those thoughts are starting to overwhelm you, take a step back. Take a breath. Instead of focusing on perfection this season, focus on connection. Think about what's important. If you really want to put the holidays in perspective this year, try to remember what last year's season looked like. You may have been completely alone or isolated with your immediate family in your house. Maybe your Christmas consisted of a Zoom call with your family across the country. You might have even been hit with other hardships, like an illness or the loss of a loved one around the season. Try to remember what you were feeling during that time, even if it's difficult to do. Chances are, all you wanted was to spend time with the people you love. We were all reminded of the importance of connection throughout the pandemic. While technology has been incredibly helpful, it's just not the same as being with people in person. Now that you're able to connect with loved ones again, remember just how important it is. And focus on that, rather than trying to make everything else about the season merry and bright. Take care of yourself. It's also important to reconnect with yourself this season. Getting caught up in the hustle and bustle of the holidays is far too easy, but it can take a lot out of you. Unfortunately, putting too much emphasis on being perfect can eventually burn you out. You'll end up resenting the holidays more than appreciating them. So, take the time to practice self-care this season. Learn to set boundaries. Don't say yes to every invitation. Rather, think about the get-togethers and the events that really matter to you. Think about the people who really matter to you and devote your time and attention to them. You'll feel less rushed, less overwhelmed, and more present in the moment. Self-care can also come in the form of meeting your basic needs. Make sure you're getting enough sleep, exercising, and eating a nutritious diet. By taking care of your mind and body, you'll feel good throughout the season and you'll be able to give your full attention and presence to the people who matter most. Get rid of the seasonal stress. People tend to put a lot of pressure on themselves when it comes to the holidays. It's understandable to want a beautifully decorated house or a delicious meal to share. There's nothing wrong with wanting things to be nice for your family and friends. But through all of the trappings of the season, don't lose sight of what's really important, real connection. We lost it once before. And although the pandemic has been a nightmare for so many, there was one important lesson it taught. Being able to spend time with the people you love, have conversations, hug each other, and simply experience that face-to-face interaction is something that should never be taken for granted. So, while it may be tempting to go all out this holiday season, don't forget to keep the core of your focus on the people you'll be spending time with, rather than the perfection of your celebrations. Five Ways to Manage Infidelity Triggers by Dr. Susan Chanderban of chanpsych.com As you try to recover from the pain of an affair, knowing how to manage infidelity triggers is essential. It's normal to feel overwhelmed with stress, hurt feelings, anger, frustration, and even anxiety. However, those triggers don't have to last forever. While infidelity is something you may never forget, It's something that you can move past whether you stay in your current relationship or not. Don't let an infidelity take over your life and define who you are. 
Let's cover five ways you can use to manage infidelity triggers and find some peace and comfort as you move forward. Number one, discuss your triggers. One of the best ways to manage infidelity triggers is to discuss them with your partner. It's not going to be an easy conversation, but if you're trying to repair and rebuild your relationship, it's important that you're both on the same page. When your partner knows your triggers, they will be more conscious about what to say and do around you. That doesn't mean either of you should be walking on eggshells. Rather, it's a sign of respect that they're willing to understand what triggers you and do what they can to eliminate those things from your environment. Number two, understand your emotions. To know what your triggers really are, you have to develop a deep understanding of your emotions. How do you feel when you're triggered by something? How does your body respond? What is your mind telling you? The more in tune you are with your emotions, rather than trying to ignore them, you'll feel more in control. If you're having trouble identifying your emotions or you're numbing yourself to your feelings, it might be helpful to work with an individual therapist to help you manage your emotions. Number three, commit to growth. The problem with infidelity triggers is that they bring feelings of pain and betrayal to the surface. If you want to move past them in your relationship, you have to choose to become the master of your thoughts. You might not be able to stop triggers or how they make you feel, but you can decide how to respond. Be persistent in your desire to grow. Write down your feelings in a journal. Lean on a support system. Talk to your partner. As long as you commit to responding in healthy and effective ways, you'll be on the right track. Number four, communicate more often. If you're staying in your relationship, understand that your communication efforts will be different than before the infidelity. Maybe you had poor communication before, or maybe you thought it was okay. Whatever the case, your communication efforts need to be more transparent and stronger than ever. No matter what you're feeling, talk to your partner about it. It'll take some time to want to be vulnerable again, but it's a fantastic way to heal, rebuild trust, and get to know everything you both are feeling. And number five, get professional help. You don't have to learn how to manage triggers on your own. Whether you are overwhelmed with grief or don't feel like you can handle the daily triggers and what they're doing to your well-being, don't hesitate to seek professional help. Attending couples therapy is a great way to rebuild your relationship from the ground up. You'll get to the bottom of any lingering issues in your relationship and may even learn what contributed to the infidelity to occur in the first place. However, you might also benefit from one-on-one therapy to help you identify and work through your triggers. If you are trying to deal with the impact of infidelity, Don't feel like you have to do it on your own. You just listened to the posts titled Holiday Refocus, Connection Instead of Perfection, and Five Ways to Manage Infidelity Triggers, both by Dr. Susan Chanderban of Chanpsych.com. And a great couple of posts from Dr. Susan. Thanks to her for those. I really enjoyed these ones. I hope you did as well. You know, as we find ourselves in the midst of the holiday season here, uh, it's really important to remember that all the time together, you know, the time with families, the traditions, etc., they really stand to highlight both the beautiful and the more difficult parts of our relationships. It's a time of year in which we are more prone to sort of taking stock of our lives and our decisions, reflecting on that which is most meaningful to us, uh, you know, for better or worse. And going into it with the right mindset and the right intentions can make all the difference. So consider what that might mean for you and yours and what steps you can take to make this season more pleasant if there are any. And you know we will be here to help you through it too as we don't slow down during the holidays, bringing you the best relationship content around every day, no matter what. And with that being said, we are all done for today. Thank you so much for joining and staying until the end, everybody. I hope you found both posts to be rewarding and insightful. And I will see you again today for our weekly bonus episode. So be sure to check that out, where your optimal life awaits.